Okay. Welcome to Austin Grove Baptist Church. A little different here today, and that's okay. Different's okay. For those that visit with us, we're delighted to have you. Won't you just make yourselves right at home, first and foremost? You're in God's house. Secondly, you're here at Austin Grove. We're glad you're here this day. Good to see each and every one of you. And for those that are joining us online, we, we're so grateful for each one that is joining in with us. Let me just call your attention to just a few announcements, if I may, here. Uh, notice Doris Edwards' new phone number listed there in the uh, bulletin. Please note that. Uh, if you would like, I still I have one copy of the uh, uh, the Great Disappearance, Dr. David Jeremiah's latest book. So if you'd like it, if you'll see me after after church. I'll be glad to first come, first serve there. Uh, we'll be starting this book study as soon as I get the study and all the DVDs. Uh, they uh, say they have been they have left their facility. So hopefully I'll get it in the next couple weeks here, next week or so here. So keep that in mind. Wall calendars, pocket calendars, they're all in the vestibule for you to pick up. Also, you've got the fall uh, for the, uh, uh, for the uh, November issues of Mature Living, the Home Life, uh, and our Daily Bread. And the fall open windows are back in the vestibule. Be sure you pick those up. If you did not get your, uh, uh, your newsletter, please pick that up also if you would here. If you're interested in volunteering here in our school system to help uh, uh, listen to like some of our boys and girls read, I've got some information back here. Uh, so if you've got some time that you'd be available for there, we can put you in whatever school, because uh, I think all the schools are certainly indeed would love to have somebody to come and just assist in that. Uh, veteran pavers, uh, I know a number of you have, uh, are putting pavers there in memory or honor of our veterans. There are forms that are on the bulletin board directly behind me in the hallway. Please pick those up. You can give them to Barbara or you can give it to Teddy. Griffin, or you'll turn them in here, we'll be sure it gets to the right place here. The uh, uh, Piedmont Co Community Breast Walk coming up on the 21st, please note that also. Uh, UBA, the annual session coming up there at Philadelphia Baptist on the 24th. Uh, as of today, we've got some more shoe boxes today. We, we have 104 shoe boxes that have, already been uh, that have been brought in, and I'll turn the, this last one in here sometime later on this week. Don't forget time change is coming on November the 5th. The, a shower, uh, a wedding shower for Morgan. Keep that in mind there if you would. Uh, trunk or treat coming up on the 25th. Please note we will not have our Bible study or our regular slate of services. Everything will be in the back. These buildings will remain locked. Please keep that in mind if you would there. Uh, invite your children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. We'd love to have any and all neighbors to come and be a part of that. Please note the uh, Operation Christmas Child Shoebox Packing Night. We have the time reserved, and that time is Thursday, December the 7th, and that'll be from 7 to 10. We have a sign-up sheet back in the back, so uh, please, you can see Melissa, please get your name on the list, and we can take the bus, or you can take cars, whatever works for you there, keep that in mind. This is the final week for in fact, you need to get it in tomorrow or Tuesday. We need to get those forms in. If someone needs assistance uh, there with the Donna Pittman Toy Store, we have application back applications back here, uh, please there. If you would like to volunteer, this year they're asking you to, you, you would just call the associational office. They'll give you a time on that. Christmas show uh, there. I've got a few more tickets left. Uh, I, I was able to secure five additional ones. We've already had a couple of those that has already been taken. Keep that in mind if you would. Is there any other announcement that needs to be brought to our attention before I recognize Steve here? Steve, come if you would here. Cindy and 
Leon and tell them how much you appreciate them. Also, we'd like for you, if you just write a card out to them and just put it in there, something that, uh, why you appreciate them here and really how blessed we are to have them here. And uh, also a love offering, you can attach it in your card, or if you want to do that separately, you can do that, two cards, if you want to do it anonymously, okay? And uh, let's see, and we'll have a reminder for that next Sunday, but remember, October the 29th, Covered Dish Lunch at the church, okay? Thank you. Appreciate that. We appreciate each of you here. If there's no other announcements, let me just turn uh, call your attention to our prayer list. Let's continue remembering each name that's on our prayer list. Uh, Bill and Carol Fowler, uh, keep them in mind as Bill is still looking for a uh, transplant. Uh, he had two times he's already been called to the hospital just did not work out. The organs were not viable. Uh, in fact, the last time, just a few minutes away from uh, him being in the operating room. So keep, keep Bill and Carol in your prayers. Uh, LeBron, I think he's going to, they'll be setting a time pretty soon to do some artery work here, uh, but get him that cleaned out. Keep him in your prayers. Uh, here we're glad JV and Doris are back with us here. JV's that he didn't get hurt any worse than what he did on the fall. I know it's I know it's not been easy on you these last week or so. So I know he appreciates our prayers, and uh, so keep that in mind. Anybody else we need to add to our prayer list? Every person on here is equally important. Please help us remember each person. Anybody else we need to add to our prayer list? Anybody else at all? Okay. Keep in mind our missionaries, keep them, but all of our men and women that are in service uh, here. Uh, Jimmy, I think uh, you've got one going, going uh, maybe in route already, is that right? Jimmy? Have you got somebody that's in route to uh, over in the Middle East? Oh, Jimmy, okay, it's Jimmy Hager. So, okay, all right. Keep, keep in mind, everyone that is in in military service and those that are serving our police forces and our EMS. Uh, certainly uh, keep in mind that if you would here. Anybody else at all we need to mention? Okay. Robin Powell. What's that? Sundays. Uh, some people say uh, they just declare up and down that they get the best rest possible. Uh, I tell you, hey, feel free to rest, but don't snore. Uh, otherwise, be all right. Yes, uh, Steve reminded us too here. I have a little uh, text. Let me just share this with you if I, if I could. Israel, you are not alone. Today, as the international media reverts uh, to to type and begins to criticize an Israel for killing terrorists. We need to speak up by asking family and friends to stand up for Israel like they never have before. In addition, in our modern age, speaking out on social media is one of the most effective ways to. Today, as we go to Sunday school services, we hope that all of our churches will be committed to joining us by participating in this Israel You Are Not Alone. Sunday. Uh, today, as Steve had mentioned here, uh, looks like a ground attack is inevitable. I think that is going to happen. Uh, we're just not sure when. It may be happening even now as we speak. Uh, uh, that is not going to be an easy task. Uh, there are going to be many, many casualties. Uh, please pray for the Lord's hand be laid upon every, uh, every soldier. Certainly, indeed, uh, this uh, group, uh, they have no, uh, uh, no bones about it. Just simply they would like to annihilate the nation of, of, of uh, Israel. So please keep, keep that in prayer uh, in, as a matter of prayer, if you would. And I'll 
Israel is at war after su suffering the most gruesome and deadly terror attack in Jewish state's history. Jerusalem has declared Israel to be in a state of war for the first time in over half a century. As Israel prepares to take the fight to the enemy and vanquish those who have murdered innocent people in their beds, in their homes, and the arms of their parents, we must stand up. So today, we ask every Christian to pray and ask for God's direction and guidance and hand be laid upon them. So Christians across the country today, we join forces of praying uh, for the nation of Israel, for those that are being held captive here this morning, and I'm not sure we actually have a, a correct number. I'm not sure they know. Uh, uh, you pray for the safe, safe keeping of those that have been taken hostage. Uh, this is a very, very difficult time, and I know that we have soldiers that have been deployed uh, to, uh, to the area uh, on our ships. Others have been deployed in neighboring countries. Please keep them in your prayers if you would. So let's take this opportunity. Let's go to the Lord in prayer if we may at this time. May we pray. Heavenly Father, the world's circumstances and situations that we find ourselves in in the nation of Israel, we pray, Lord, for your hand be laid upon this nation, which is your people, your nation, as are we in every nation. Father, I pray your protection. I pray, Lord, your guidance on the leader, leadership. And I pray, Father, for those that will be going in that, that they may be able to have successful rescues of those that have been taken from their homes and uh, placed in hostage situations. Lord, just may your hand be upon the nation of Israel this day. And as we join our hearts in that prayer. <coughs> Lord, as we be begin this time of prayer, we always just want to give an opportunity for those that are here. And those that visit with us, we count it a privilege to stand alongside of one another this week and to take before you, Father, prayer requests. For those that are joining us online, if you would at this time, if you've got an unspoken prayer need or just a concern that's laying heavy upon your heart and life, will you just slip up your hand right now? I promise you God sees every hand. And though, if you're home, just slip up every hand. We want to pray with and for you. Lord, will you touch every hand that has been raised, every life, every family. We know we've got families here in the Ford family, the Easton family, the family. These families right now are hurting as well as we know that there are, there are a whole host of others that we could have mentioned. Lord, I pray for your comfort and your strength and your abiding presence and, and reminding them of your, that, that they're not ever walking this path of life alone. So Lord, would you just touch them. Every name that's on our prayer list, we've got those that stand in need of surgeries. We've got others that are continue to get diagnosis of uh, certain uh, ailments that are going on in their lives, some battling cancer. Lord, in every case, will you sustain them? Will you guide the treatments that are being prescribed or will be uh, subscribed, prescribed for those individuals? Lord, we ask for healing in every case, in accordance with your will in every life. For those that that they know that there is some surgery and procedures that are going on soon that they're going to be having. Lord, I ask for your guidance and your healing power. Lord, in this service, Lord, thank you that we have the privilege of just meeting here together, so many across this uh, world of yours, Father. Uh, this morning, they're having to meet in uh, houses or places in which that not, a, not an assembly uh, as a church, but just a, a group of people having to meet because the governments just will not allow it. Lord, I pray your blessings upon each one. For our missionaries, whether they're serving
serving on this continent or whether they're serving uh, in other nations, Lord, will you bless their efforts likely as they continue to, to uh, try to get a copy of your word, Father, into the hands of all people. God, and they have ambitious goals that, Lord, can only be met by your hand being laid upon them. You have blessed them all these many years, and they, they still continue that tedious work of getting your word, Father, translated to where men and women, boys and girls, can read and understand your word, and they can come to know Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. Father, as we start this service, Lord, we want, we want to return to you. I know that there are many instances in which that we have seen where that, that we have made decisions that, Lord, as we look back, we wished we hadn't made as a government or a nation and as a world. But yet, Father, now, Lord, we pray that we shall surely seek your face and humble ourselves and take these concerns to you on our knees and ask, Father, for your direction. Here this morning, if there are rededications or commitments, or Lord, if we just need to come together to pray, Lord, I pray that this is the hour, Lord, that your word may speak to us in a very clear, distinct manner, and that, Father, that we're going to be drawn closer and closer to thee. So, Lord, we want to lift you up. We want to lift Christ up. We want to exalt him this day. And, Father, that we each one have gathered here to worship you with all of our being. So, Father, we want to do just that very thing. For we ask it in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
for those that are dressed in old fashioned. I don't know about you. I'm, uh, hey, I'm kind of happy. I like kind of kind of come this way every week, uh, like this. Uh, here, these blue jeans are pretty comfortable here. Return to the Lord. Echoed many times throughout our uh, nation. It's hardly a place that we go that there's not a concern uh, for the moral decay. And the wrong paths and the wrong decisions that many times we see our nation and our people headed that is so contrary or adverse to what God's Word says. So important, folks, that we adhere to what God's Word says. Man's words... Uh, they pass away. But His words are eternal. His words are wisdom that is far, far, far from this world. His words are where we are to find genuine truth. I want to share, and then we're going to get into the book of Romans here. And just, we're only going to share just a few verses here. Uh, today, and you'll see me look at my watch. I have a little, uh, a little clock here, and it uh, uh, it died on me this morning. So I'll have another one for next week. But uh, so I'll watch. And if it uh, about uh, five till, if I have it not wrapping it up, somebody jump up and say hallelujah, <laughs> and I'll know. I'll know. Stand with me if you would. I'm going to read out of the book of Joel, and then we'll go over in the book of Romans. But I want to um, Joel, a prophet of the Lord. He proclaimed, and I want to just read a couple verses here, and then I'm in the first chapter, but I want to, uh, to go over and read a few verses here in the second chapter. Now, Joel opens the Lord's, what the Lord's telling him, telling him to tell the people. He says, The word of the Lord that came to Joel, Hear this, ye old men, give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Hath this been in your days, or even in the days of your father? And the third verse in this first chapter, Joel, says these words. Tell ye your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. Folks, that hasn't changed. You and I need to continue to keep telling the story of Jesus Christ and who He is and who our Heavenly Father is and how much He loves us and He's there for us continuously, steadfastly in each of our lives. Joel was reminding the people, hear this God's Word. Prophets proclaim the Word of the Lord. I'm going to skip over to the second chapter of Joel. I want to read a few verses here if I may. Therefore, also now saith the Lord, Turn ye even to me, and he said, With all of your heart. He said also, Turn oneself to fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your heart. And I, I want you to pay close attention to this, this next verse. Here in the middle part, he says, don't just rend your heart, not your garments. Now, what, he, what Joel was really, what the Lord's really saying is that, look, and that was a common thing. When they would go in and feel the unholiness of oneself, they might tear their garments. Here the Lord's saying, I want you to turn your heart, rend your heart. Let your heart be uh, turned where it needs to be toward the Lord. Not the garments that, that you may tear in reverence to God. But to, let, your, let your heart be turned to the Lord. And, and the next phrase in this verse says, And turn unto the Lord your God. If ever America and the world needed to do so, it's today. Turn our hearts in the direction of our God. 
For God is gracious. For God is merciful. For God is slow to anger. And He is of great kindness. And repenteth Him of the evil. Who knoweth if He will return and repent? And leave a blessing behind him. Even a meat offering and a drink offering to the Lord your God. America needs to hear the words of Joel today. Blow the trumpet in Zion. I've heard many people say, even Greg Laurie and some of the other uh, evangelists that you might know are saying that this is continuation of the fulfillment of Scripture. The things and events that we're seeing in the Middle East. Can we tell you the precise day that Jesus will return? No. No man knoweth the hour. If somebody tries to tell you and put an exact date, the Scripture does not support that and does not say that. No one knows that hour. No one knows that time. But here Joel is saying, come back to me. Come back to the Lord. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify fast. Call the solemn assembly. And very quickly here, before we go into Romans here in just a moment, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, uh, let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. And the last verse I'm going to read here, and then we'll have prayer. I'll let you be seated. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, let them weep between the porch and the altar. In other words, as they're journeying and they're getting ready to, to worship the Lord and do what they're called to do in the temple, let tears flow from their eyes. How many? How long has it been since we've shed tears in the name of Jesus Christ? How long is it? How long has it been that we, as a nation, that we have been truly sorry for what the direction that we find ourselves and our society in today? So far from our the word of our Lord and what He's telling us. So he says, let them say, spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen shall rule over them. Wherefore should they say, the people, where is their God? May God add his blessings to the reading of his rich and holy word. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, if we may, at this time. Heavenly Father, your word is truth. Your word is precious. Your word is everlasting. Lord, this day, we come before you as a congregation of people, whether in person or online. We come together as a nation, as a world that is seeking, Lord, your guidance and your direction in each of our lives. So, Father, may your Holy Spirit Speak your message clearly and distinctly into our hearts and our lives this day that we may be challenged to come unto thee. For, Father, you and you alone is where we can find forgiveness and new direction and new guidance. And, Lord, I know that your hand is upon us. And so, Lord, this day may we hear your word, for we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. Be seated. <clears throat> good to be in the Lord's house, isn't it? Always good to come into God's house to worship. The prophet of old, Joel, as the Lord had told him, as the people were, were as the priests and the others that worked there within the temple or the synagogues, as they were journeying to worship, to be sure that their heart and their life is where it needed to be, that it would bring tears to their eyes because they would feel such a heavy burden and a need that truth shall prevail, not only in a nation, but in their lives and the lives of our people. Truth. Truth many times is very evasive in our society. You can listen, 
you can read, depending on who you're listening to and who, and who has written whatever you are reading. Some stories are way, way different. They're at opposite ends, ends of a perspective. What do you believe? Who do you believe? Our Heavenly Father is where... If you have your Bibles, look with me in the book of Romans, the 12th chapter. We're going to read just a few verses there, how important it is. And I want us to look uh, here, if we may. We're going to see here in Romans, the 12th chapter, how important it is. And you've heard this many times. And we've gone over it a number of times, in a, either on our Wednesday nights and some here on this, in our services. Look with me here. In verse, uh, in verse 1 of chapter 12. And I'm reading out of King James. Whatever translation you're reading is fine. Written to early believers. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable and I want you to notice the next two words acceptable unto God our Heavenly Father expects has very clear expectations of what he expects from each of us we think so many times when there's such a thing as a calling we think it's only from a ministerial or a or a missionary standard I believe there are callings upon each of our lives to accomplish God's will and God's work in and about where our lives are based today. You've heard me use terms, divine appointments. I believe there are certainly indeed there are appointments and places in which that God has intended for you and I to be at certain points in time in our lives. I believe that our Heavenly Father has individuals in which that, and a task that, is, that He has laid before us to accomplish. But yet, knowing full well that I know that in each of our lives, from time to time, we may feel that inkling or that calling to go or to do or to, or to be there. And there are times in which that we answer, yes, Lord, I'm here. And we do that very thing. And what a wonderful thing it is. But at the same token, I know that there are times in which that our Heavenly Father is saying to us that I have something for you to do and some place for you to go. It may be a, a half a mile down the road. It may be simply to your workplace. It may be simply that God's going to bring someone across your path during that day. And that person is going to have a need to hear a word of encouragement an act of kindness, a hug, or somebody that simply genuinely cares. In many ways, we, we, we live in a society that really is there genuineness. Is there genuine love for one another? Or is it a passing thing? Jesus Christ taught us the importance of every person. Jesus Christ would even remind us, and we started a, a series last week of talking about where the Christian, the believer's life, we're in direct, in direct path against that which is ungodly and evil. We're directly there, we're going against. Satan loves, he can't take us out of God's hand but he certainly indeed can try to hinder us. And when the times in which that we fail to say, yes, Lord, I'm here and I want to do what you call me to do. And I want to take of my time to accomplish what, Lord, you have laid before me. I want to do that very thing. And he said, I want you there. I want you to be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is, and I want you to see that, notice that last phrase in 
uh, in verse 1 here in chapter 12 of Romans. Which is your reasonable service. You've heard me say many times, use that terminology that God doesn't ever call on us to do more than what we can do or something that you and I can't accomplish. But God does expect you and I to do that which He knows that we are able to do. And He expects us to do it. Now I want you to look at the second verse here as we continue reading here. I know our time's going to get a, away from us today. This is, a, this is a verse that you've heard many, many times. And be not conformed to this world. Don't let this world be a determining factor. And we dealt a little bit of, about this last Sunday. Can you just see the collision? We, we, we launched a satellite or a, a rover of some type that is going to go so many millions, if not billion miles away to a solid core meteor. Uh, I'm not sure how long it's going to take. Uh, a long way, a long way away. Uncertainty. Those things that are going on and happening there. Uh, so the world's putting forth a, a, a lot of information, a lot of things that are going on there. And the world's th constantly throwing things at us. There are, there are times in which that we must take a long, hard look at ourselves. What do you believe? Why do you believe it? And we have to ask ourselves, how far are we going to take our belief? Are we going to stay, take that stand? John the Baptist would come on the scene as a forerunner of Christ, repent for the kingdom of God's at hand. John would cry out to the people. Stir their hearts so that we would see that true repentance needs to be at the very core of our being, of who we are as believers. The transformation that Christ is seeking to give into our lives, it can only be accomplished when you and I truly repent and we give our heart and life to Christ. We saw two, two last week that came forward and gave their heart and life to Jesus Christ. What a blessing it is to come to know Jesus. What a blessing it is that I, I am resolved that I'm going to follow Jesus Christ irregardless. Look as we continue on. Be not conformed to this world, but I want you to be transformed and I want you to notice the next phrase this year in this particular verse. I want you to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We've got to clean out our attic, so to speak. All of us from time to time, I think I've taken uh, to, we have a ministry over in the edge of Stanley County that uh, we have supported and we've taken things to for a long, long time. And, uh, uh, Cindy loves to go out and she, she'll go in her closet and I'll get a, just a few little things. She'll go in my closet and lo and behold, this bag, I, I, I am dragging this bag down the stairs and, uh, and uh, uh, more than likely I am going and I'm, I'm emptying half of that out so I can take it to the car. Uh, that, some of you are smiling. I know that same thing's happening to you too. Uh, so, you know, we need to, to do some close and honest, up front, look at our own lives and where Jesus Christ would have us to be. Now that's easier for me to say than it is for us to do. Because you know what I found throughout my years has been that there are times in which I really don't want to admit exactly who I really am. There are times in which I really, I know that I could, have, I could have been a better son of our Heavenly Father than what I have been. If I could go back and redo some things and all these, hey, listen, I'd have done things a whole lot differently. And I want to, as, as many years as, I, as God grants me, I want to be able to proclaim Jesus wherever God places me. All the days of my life, I want to be able to, to be sure that my mind in, is where it ought to be. And if my mind's where it ought to be, I've got a higher likelihood that my heart's going to be where it needs to be too. But if my mind is out of sort, my mind is lined up to the world, folks, there's a higher likelihood 
that I'm going to succumb to the temptations the world may throw at me that if my mind's not where it ought to be. You need to get your head right. We've, we've all said that. And, you know, I hope that you've got a, a good enough friend that will simply say to you that he or she can say the truth to you. We need truth tellers in our life. And we need to give them permission that if you and I are going down the wrong path and our minds are not where they need to be and our hearts are not where they ought to be, that they're going to be honest with us. And they're going to tell us if there's a change of direction. Everybody needs friend or friends like that to help us down the path of life. It's so important. This is what the writers throughout the Scriptures is telling us and reminded us. Get your minds where, they, uh, where it ought to be. Now I want you to look at the middle part of verse 2 where it says that you may prove what is that good. You know what the Scripture telling me? Our lives ought to be a proven ground for who God is and what God means in, in yours and my life. Boy, that really steps on my, on my toes. That really issues a tremendous and a strong challenge in my life. Lord, that other people might look at our lives, at my life, what that this is example. There are a lot of people today there are millions of people that will not come into an assembly of believers as we are, are privileged to, to be at today. There are many people that will not. Some of which do not have a copy of God's Word. I had somebody last week, Preacher, do you have a Bible you could give me? As a matter of fact, I do. Listen, I'm not going to let somebody walk, uh, walk out without a Bible if they need a Bible. So important, folks, that, that we realize that our life, others are looking at to see what difference has Jesus Christ made in our lives as a believer. There are a lot of people that are believing that they're going to enter heaven by their goodness, by doing enough stuff. That can be discounted very quickly. The stuff as good as Good, doing good, moral, kind, upright things is wonderful. But it's not going to get you or I in heaven. Jesus Christ would tell us that He is the only way. He's truth. And that He is the only way that you and I will ever have eternal life. And yours or my name will be written in the book of life. No other way. But yet here, and I want you to look now as we continue. Prove what is good and acceptable and perfect. And I want you to look at the last uh, three words there in this verse 2 in chapter 12 of the book of Romans. If you don't have your Bible, look with your neighbor or either you look it up when you get home. The will of God. I want to ask a question here today. Are you in the will of God in your life? is what God has set aside and rest assured He has set aside task and responsibilities for every one of us to accomplish in 2023 and we better get busy if there are things that God's wanted us to do this year because this year is almost gone. We don't know about tomorrow but today are you in the will of God where you need to be? Is your life where it needs to be? And I know most of us here, salvation is not the question. There may be some that you're not sure about where you're going to spend eternity because you've never given your heart and life to Jesus. You need to do that today. But I know as a believer, I am accountable to God as are you. Is the will of God being carried forth in your life or my life or can it be a whole lot better? You see, my mind's got to be where it's 
first and foremost, I've got to get my mind straight so I can be, make sure my heart's where it needs to be and my spirit. Because you and I are coming before genuine, authentic truth. There's not anywhere else that you and I are going to find complete and total truth than right here. Nowhere. Nowhere in this world are you going to be given what it's going to take to make you and I better individuals, better sons and daughters for our Heavenly Father because Christ tried His Word and the Holy Spirit is telling us these are things that are going to be very good for you. They're going to help you, but they're going to help all those people around you. But you've got to make that decision. God will not force us or force Himself upon us. We choose. The Bible, the Old Testament tells us to choose this day whom you're going to serve. Are you going to serve the Lord or are you going to serve the world? Return to me, God saying. Return to me. Very quickly here, I know our time's getting away. Look with me at verse 3 as we continue reading. For I say through the grace given unto me, every one of us, we are forgiven by the grace of Jesus Christ. If it were not for the grace of Christ, you know what all of us deserve? It's death. For sin alienates us between our and our, us and our Lord. But because of the forgiveness and the grace of Jesus Christ, it's a gift that God has presented to every one of us. I want you to look at the middle part of verse 3. Not to think of himself more highly than he ought to, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Now, I wanna, let me give you very quickly three points real quick because glory hallelujah is going to stand up all over this auditorium. But the first thing here, simply say no to the world. You want to be standing in the right relationship between you and Jesus Christ. What's a good way? As Satan throws the errors and the, and the ways of temptation our way and rest assured, He's going to leave you alone if you don't know Jesus Christ. Why? You're already, you're not with God. That's why He's going to throw temptations at you and I, hoping that you and I, our mind's not where it ought to be, and our heart's not where it ought to be, therefore, and definitely not our spirit's not where it ought to be, and He's going to try His best to trip us up. In yours and my life right now, maybe the first step toward that transformation that you and I need to make, we need to have some internal uh, speaking to each other about what's going on in our lives. Is there something that God detests or some sin in our lives that we have been unwilling to let go of or to turn it over to Jesus? Is there something in my life that is blocking me from feeling the power and the blessings that God is given to, is seeking to send our way? Or is it there? You and I, we need to take a long, hard look at ourselves and the first thing, simply say no to the world. A second thing I want, you, I want us to think about here today. Simply say yes to the way. Many times we say, well, being a Christian and it's just, just so simple. Give me something. That I do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I can do that. Jesus Christ said, ask for forgiveness, invite me to come into your heart and life, and Jesus said, done. Done. He made it to where even a child could understand so that no man or woman or child has to live in this life without knowing Christ as Lord and Savior. David is a walking and talking example of the importance of meditating upon God's Word day and night. God desires that we not just have the Word near us in a copy of God's Word or on your phone or on your app 
or on your uh, uh, a computer have the word deep down inside of us actually in us in our minds in our hearts in our lives true transformation will only be done when you and I allow God to do it maybe something needs to change in your life this morning maybe something is there maybe something about our daily comings and goings maybe we're not spending the time that we know we ought to we ought to be spending with the Lord I can't answer for anybody here but me because every one of us is going to stand before the Lord one day and give an account every person every knee will bow it's going to happen so if we take a good hard look at ourselves and we push all those worldly distractions and temptations to the side where does that leave the Lord is God Lord of our lives Lord of the circumstances and situations you see, when we push all the world aside and we say yes to Jesus Christ, this allows God to come and to do His transforming work in your life and my life. But as long as I've got this garbage in here, if you're heavy laden, that's why the Scripture would say, why Jesus would say, if you're heavy laden, you're burdened, He said, you come unto me and you, I'll give you rest. I'll give you peace. But you know, the mistake we oftentimes make, we have the emotional and we come and we, uh, we tell Jesus, Lord, I love you and I, and, I, and I bring this to you. But if we're not careful what we do, we've become so comfortable or it's become so much a part of who we are. If I'm not careful, I'm going to pick up exactly what I brought saying I was going to leave it and give it to Jesus and I take it right back home with me. God never intended for that. He said when you've got the, the heavy weight of sin, and you better believe sin weighs way more than what you and I can handle. And I don't care. And we've got some bodybuilders here in this church that, hey, they can lift bunches of weight here. Hey, uh, hey, the, it's nothing compared to what the weight of sin and the worldliness is going to bring to us. You've got to take it to Jesus and let Jesus handle it. Paul closes uh, uh, out at, uh, here in the book of Romans. He, he tells us here uh, that we need to be sure that we're living where we ought to be in the perfect and a pleasing way in, in our Heavenly Father's eyes. The third thing, simply realize that God has a purpose for our lives, as we've mentioned before. before. It's not too late. As long as you and I have breath and life, God's got a plan to do things for each of us in each of our lives. For some of us today that are here, it means that you and I, we don't have that vibrant faith that we really ought to have or that we've had in the past. I need to wake up. I need to come back and return to the Lord. I need that relationship. Over the years or over a span of time, we've allowed it to grow cold. That's not what God wants. You and I have allowed our lives to come directly in the path of worldliness and we have been succumbed or given in to the world. Got to be careful. Today could be your day. A day that you're set free. A day that you have a new beginning. A day that you can have a new start with Jesus Christ. For some of us, it might be that a new step of faith. That you're not certain about eternity. If you're not certain about that you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please don't leave here till we talk. And we pray together. Are you ready to make a decision to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? The eternal reward is ours for the asking. It's ours for believing and trusting in Jesus Christ. What will you do with Jesus today? Do you need to return to him? Return to me, Jesus said. Don't let the world overtake you. And the world's going to beat you up and bruise you and batter you. It's going to take you down paths that you never intended to go. Wake up. Let Jesus Christ 
be at the very stead of your life. Stand with me here. We're going to sing a hymn of invitation here. Will you come this morning, rededicate or recommit your life? not going to be a long invitation as God's speaking to you right now. Has your life found itself in that predicament of finding the world having way too much influence? You see, that collision took place between good and evil, and somehow or another the world won out. Will you come this morning? Just as you are. You see, God doesn't say, clean up your act, then come to me. Jesus said, you come just as you are, I'll take care of the rest. And he will do that. His precious blood was shed on Calvary so that you and I today could find true forgiveness and a new beginning. But we've got to decide. Just a few more minutes, we're going to close this invitation. Will you come? Just bow your heads if you would here. Musicians, continue playing. There's still time for you to come. This altar is open. You're visiting with us. You're welcome to come. As Jesus Christ leads you. He stands ready for our lives to be forever changed. No more struggles. It's your call. Let's go to the Lord in prayer if we may at this time. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for this day and the blessings you've granted to us. Father, the privilege that we have of just being together. And Lord, how your word tells us that you want to direct our paths and you want to help us to where there's not too many pitfalls and struggles that sometimes life throws at us. And and whenever that does happen, Lord, your strength is always there to, to help us over whatever hurdle or whatever thing that might come up before us. Lord, thank you for every person that share our brothers and sisters uh, in you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for that. And thank you, Lord, for those that visit with us. Lord, as we go our separate ways this day, may we go, go forward with a joy and a peace that, Father, that can only come from Jesus Christ and from your Holy Spirit. Lord, put that hedge of protection around each of us. Hear the prayers that have been offered up in this your house this day. Keep us safe, Father, and bring us back at the next appointed time here in this your house. For we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. May God bless. Welcome those that visit.